Hey everyone, the Game Chief here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to add objects to your Daisy standalone server using Daisy Community Offline Mode. And once again, I want to say I am starting off where I left off in my last Daisy video, so if you're confused, I highly recommend you start with the beginning of the series. Links are in the description and on the right hand side of your screen right now. Going into this video, I'm going to assume you already have a DAISY server set up and already working. If not, I have an entire playlist on the topic of DAISY servers in the video description. This video is broken up into five different parts. Timestamps are on your screen right now. So for part one, we're going to be downloading and setting up the DAISY community offline mode on your own computer. So we won't be doing this on your server. We're going to be doing this on your local computer um, just because you're going to be using this um, while you're playing offline just to create items and get those all placed. So we're going to go ahead and go to the GitHub page. This will be linked in the description. And then there's some information here. There's a readme file it tells you how to install it and all that along with some controls. So we're going to go ahead and hit the clone or download button and then download the zip. And that's going to download a zip file. We're going to go ahead and open this up and we'll be using 7-zip for this. And then we're going to go ahead and go to where we have Daisy installed. So I'm going to go into here. And I have Daisy installed right here. And then we're going to go inside of our missions folder. And then you see we have this default mission here. And then we have in here some more information. So we have the master folder, missions. And then we have the Daisy community offline mode dot Chinaris plus. So we want to go ahead and drag and drop that into our folder here, into our missions folder. And then we can close out of this and we can minimize this. Inside of the Daisy Community Offline Mode folder, we'll have some information here, including a batch file that starts it. Uh, you can just double click this right now. It should launch your game and it should go ahead and load you into the mode. However, some people, if you're adding custom objects, you may want to be adding objects from mods or stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this file first so I can show you how to include mods if you would like to do that as well. So I'm going to use Atom. You can use Notepad++. It's up to you. And then you can see what this does. It just starts day Z using the mission uh, with some other parameters. Now say you want to add some mods. So say something along the lines of um, base building plus or something like that. Anything that adds custom objects. We're going to want to go ahead and enable these mods when we launch into this. That we were there so we can, that they're enabled so we can place them down on the map when we go to add it to our server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, I'm going to start a quote here. I'm going to do dash mod just because that's how you do mods equals and then we're going to go ahead and have to put the location of a mod we want to do. So if I go back through here, I'm going to find a mod that I want to use. So we're going to go back to our Daisy Daisy standalone launcher and then um, I want to use base building plus. Oh. Yeah, so this base building plus. However, base building plus um, requires community framework first as do a lot of mods. So we're going to want to make sure we enable community framework as well. So I have CF right here. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to copy this full path. And then, so if I go in here, I can set the mod equal to this. So it knows, Hey, I want to lo load that mod. And then to add an additional mod, I'm just going to go ahead and add a semicolon and then I can add another path. So then we want to go ahead and go back and we want to do, let me see here. Yeah, base building plus. So we go ahead and go in here. Again, copy the full path. And then after the semicolon, we can just go ahead and paste it in. And then the last item on the list doesn't need a semicolon at the end, so we won't put one. And then the quote ends right here. So you just have one quote for one giant thing saying these are the mods we want to load. We do this entire thing in a quote, that way any spaces won't cause any issues. So we can go ahead and save this file. And we should be able to, to be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into our missions folder, into our Daisy community offline mode. And then we have our bat file right here. And we're just going to double click on it. And then if you see that, it means you don't have Steam running, which it turns out I don't. So I can just go ahead and start Steam real fast. And then I can go and run that again. Alrighty, now we're in game. Um, it gave us like a default loadout. 
And if we go ahead and tab out real fast, we can go back to the GitHub page and it does have some general controls here. Um, so everything here and the teleport you're looking at, all this stuff, um, which can be helpful when you're placing stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and press insert to go into the free cam mode right here. And I'm gonna mainly be using free cam. So I'm just gonna fly over here. And then this is where you can say if you wanna spawn some stuff and save it. So I'm gonna press Y to open up the menu right here. And then we have the object spawner. So this is where you can spawn objects, whatever you need to do. Uh, say we're doing uh, some items from base building plus, um, like concrete mixer, something like that. Put it on the cursor, doesn't really matter. Um, just kind of place whatever you want, wherever you need it. Um, and to actually modify the objects, like where they're sitting, we can go into here. So press Y again, the object info, and then you can actually just select stuff. Um, so say this one right here, and then it gives us the X, Y position, Z, all that, and pitch and all that. So we can go ahead and adjust this. So if we wanted to do that, that, um, So you can just kind of adjust everything here to how you would like. So for rotating it, all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a few objects and then I can go ahead and show you guys how to export this and get all these custom objects saved to your server. Alrighty, so I went ahead and placed a few items, kind of threw them randomly about in this yard right here. Another very helpful tip is when you're trying to position items, when you're like customizing, like say if we go in here, um, select an item like uh, the wheelbarrow, um, trying to customize these to fit exactly where you want, it can be very useful. Uh, let me close out of that. If you press P on your keyboard, it'll actually write your uh, position um, on the bottom of your screen there and also write that to the log file. And it just makes it easier if you have your character standing in a certain place, you're trying to get something right on that spot. It makes it a lot easier to place stuff. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started with exporting these so that way we can have these custom items spawning on our server. So we're gonna go ahead and open the menu again, press this icon right here, and it shows everything that we've spawned here. Um, so we have a couple items and you have a couple options. So you can press save right here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna save it to a file um, in your documents folder. And what that means is you can come back to this using the uh, Daisy community offline mode again, and you can continue editing. So if we alt tab real fast, look at documents. Daisy. And then so you have this um, object editor save and we could look at this, but you don't really need to this, edit this at all. This just is a save file of everything that you've placed. And if we go back in game, it just basically means that if we close the game and relaunch it, these items are still gonna be there because it's gonna read from that file. The other thing we can do is we can go ahead and press clear and that's gonna delete everything out of here. And then we can also export it, which is what we wanna do. So we're gonna go ahead and hit export. And then it's gonna copy everything to the clipboard. So I'm gonna alt tab again, and I'm just gonna create a new file so I can paste this all in real fast. And then that's just gonna have some stuff right here that we're gonna need. And that's where we get into part three here is we're gonna be transferring all the objects that we created um, in Daisy Community Offline mode to our Daisy standalone server. So we have all this stuff here. And when it comes to transferring everything, there's a very helpful wiki on the Daisy Community Offline mode uh, GitHub page. And it kind of goes over all this, including some advanced options for trying to place stuff and get it all in the correct area. I will link this in the description below and it can be very useful as you're trying to get stuff sorted out and placed properly. And to actually get our objects onto a server, we need to go and remote into our server, which I have up right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and navigate to our Daisy folder. And once we're in our Daisy folder, we're gonna go into our MP missions, and then we're gonna be using the mission for our server. Right now we are using this top one, Chinaris Plus, uh, just the regular one, um, and we're not using the other map right now. So we're gonna go in here, and then there's a file we're gonna to need to edit. So we have the init.c file, we're gonna to need to edit this. It's important to note whenever you're editing files in the mission folder, you should always keep a backup of these because some Daisy updates or other mod updates can actually break this or overwrite your changes. So make sure you keep a backup. 
Alrighty, and to edit this init.c file, I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up in Atom, which I have opened up right here. You can use Notepad++ or whatever your preferred text editor. Um, so this is just gonna have some core stuff that actually makes the game run. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna need a helper function that helps spawn these objects. So if we look back at what we exported here, this is our um, helper function, it's a spawn object. The first thing we wanna do is I'm just gonna copy this name and you wanna make sure you don't already have this. So sometimes you may already have it if you've done other modding or stuff like that with spawning objects. So I'm just gonna paste in here and I don't have it already, so that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this entire helper function. And I'm gonna go ahead and go back in here. And then you see this void main. So this is like the main of the file. Um, it's like this entire file, this is the main thing. And we don't wanna put our helper function in here. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the top here, add a couple extra lines. And then we have our spawn object function right here, which is not in the main. We only need to make this once. Once it's in the init.c, you don't need to make this really ever again unless it gets overwritten or something like that. So just make sure you have one of these at the very top and that's it. And then we're gonna go to our custom spawn objects right here. So this has some cu different custom objects. We have a couple of whales in here that I put down, the tree, the solar panel, the wheelbarrow, all that stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and copy all of this. Once we have all this copied, we're gonna go back to our server. And then we have to add this inside of the main. Um, it doesn't really matter where you put this. Um, I typically put this right between the weather and the economy, um, just because of I know it works there. Um, you should theoretically be able to put it anywhere in the main though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a couple extra lines here. It's gonna go ahead and paste those all in and everything looks good here. They all have semicolons because it all exported properly and everything looks good here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and start the server and check and make sure everything's working properly. All right, and it looks like our server's fully launched now. So we can go ahead and minimize out of our remote connection and then we can go ahead and join our server. So we can go ahead and open up the data standalone launcher. And then once that downloads the latest server list, we can go ahead and join our server. We can go ahead and join. Alrighty, now that we're in game, I went ahead and went over to the same town over here that we were working at earlier. And we're at the same front yard, and as you can see, it looks like all our custom objects have spawned. We have the bed, wheelbarrow, that toolbox, uh, that tree, along with the solar panel over here. So it looks like everything's working properly and everything that is spawned in. And that's about it. It's kind of a short video just because we want to quickly cover Daisy Community Offline Mode, how to add those objects and how to get it onto your main server. Um, because we're going to be using this for other videos in the future um, on how to spawn stuff and stuff like that and add other mods that require it. So just a very quick video. If you have more questions about it, if you go to the GitHub wiki page that is linked to the description for Daisy Community Offline Mode, it does have more controls and different things talking about how to better spawn objects, how to move stuff around and all that. So if you're looking for some more kind of fun Fine grain controls, those are listed on the wiki um, that will be linked in the description. Other than that, there should be some more videos coming soon, including the banking add on, a few other things, all that. If you guys have any video suggestions or mod setup videos you would like to see, let me know. And any important information or corrections will be in the description. Other than that, have a great day.